fact you don't live in the district an issue? I don't think so. I, I supported I John Klein. Your opponents will. Well, sure, they will, but that's all they've got. Uh, look, I, I supported John Klein twice, and I was drawn out of the district, not unlike Michelle Bachman and many other Congress people. And, and I live right smack dab on the border. It's not as though I'm coming down from Duluth or Moorhead and picking a district. I doctors in the second, my school districts in the second. I every day I'm in the second. So I know the second district. And, and it, it, there's some people claim that the district has become less conservative or more liberal. Well, I do is, think is it's that an in, true. Or what do you feel? I don't know, but I think it's an independent district. I mean, it voted for Jeff Johnson for governor but a voter for Barack Obama, I think, what, 350, 360 votes. Um, it's hard to say, but I do think that the district and the country is calling for independent thinking, not this sort of red versus blue, I'm going to put party above principle. Uh, if my party's wrong on this and somebody happens to be right, I'm going to go with that position, and that's the way I approach it. What's going to be the deciding issue? With the, uh... Oh, I think the economy still. I mean, there's a lot of... Obviously, we have to be concerned about ISIS and terrorism, but we can't fight anybody if we don't get growth. We've got to get this economy going again. No, actually, one of the things I was most curious about today was uh, the discussion around the endorsement process. Yes. How do you think uh, the GOP in the CD2 will need to best prepare for uh, the upcoming election, considering there's only one candidate right now on the Dem side? Yeah, I know, and that's why I'm a big fan of abiding by the endorsement. Um, we're going to be at a strategic disadvantage. They're going to be able to raise money and go right through all right through the election without having to fight. If we get into a, a primary, that's going to divert resources to time and, and all sorts of things. We can ill afford to do that. So if you, if you really want to win this race, you ought to be abiding by the endorsement. You may not like the process, but that's the law in Minnesota. Okay. So you say, don't have, I mean, the law doesn't say you have to, but I mean, it, we have an endorsement for a reason. Yeah. Well, if there were a primary on the Democratic side, but there were no primary on the Republican yeah. side, well, I don't, you know, I don't know that it alters your view of the general. It's just that you have time to build a monetary Base. You have time to fundraise. You have yeah. time to build a war chest and organize. Yeah. Where if you're involved in a primary, those resources are being depleted. So now you've got to turn it around from August to November, which is a very short window. Yeah. And that puts the Republicans at a disadvantage if we don't get people to abide by the endorsement. And why wouldn't you abide by the endorsement? If you can't win the endorsement, are you going to win the, the, the general, the primary? <laughs> Who's going to be the GOP candidate? I'm going to win the endorsement, and I'll be the GOP candidate. Okay, good. Um, Didn't you say I was <laughs> certain about well, my position? No, <laughs> yeah. no, good no, luck. Thank I, you very much. And last question is on the racial disparities question, yes. which I honestly was not expecting. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Minnesota, um, Black Lives Matter, a lot of the work that's coming out, and even though a lot of people on the, on the panel were saying this is not a government issue, but it's definitely a national discussion. Right. As a congressperson, how would you respond to the national discussion around racial disparities? I would look, I'd take a serious look at where government has policies that apply to people of color, and they might be, or the net result might be unequal. Mm -hmm. I would not tell private individuals how to conduct their affairs. That's not government's business. Mm -hmm. But if the government is doing something yeah. that isn't right, then we ought to take a look at that. And, that, and, and let, that's why I talked about uh, medical marijuana and marijuana in general. Yeah. Um, there is an argument to be made. Now, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I think we ought to look at it. That drug laws are primarily enforced in, in urban and minority communities. Now, the, the, the pe people on the other side say, well, that's because that's where the drugs are. And there's some truth to that. But if there's an inequity there, if, if the law is bad and has a disparate impact, we ought to take a look at it. Yeah. But in the final analysis, the best way to handle any sort of, of inequity with regard to different uh, people is economic growth. Yeah. We've got to get economic growth and get black businesses and Hispanic businesses and, and, and businesses run by women growing again. You don't do that with one and a half percent growth. Yeah, one of the big concerns of people of color right now in terms of racial disparities is police brutality. Right. How would you respond to that specific um, discussion? Well, I, I will say we've, we've got to take a deep breath and step back and look at every incident. I do think there's been a rush to judgment on some of that. Um, we've seen police brutality, there's no question about that. But we've also seen falsely accused brutality uh, in Ferguson, quite frankly. Um, so let, let's just keep our heads calm on that. If there's a problem, we will address it. But um, judge each case individually. That would be mine.